2018 iPad Pro, not really a tablet anymore? Hey, I want to take a quick second here to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Some of the features that Nord offers that sets it apart from other VPN services, they've got more than 5,100 servers in 62 countries, and that's updated on a weekly basis. They're actually recommended by speed test. It's also the only VPN to get all the green check marks from PC magazine. Check out NordVPN today. They've got a special Cyber Month three-year deal that lets you get NordVPN for $2.99 a month. That's 75% off, but there's more, a little something extra for my painfully honest brethren. By using the coupon code Honest Tech, that's Honest Tech, no spaces. You can get one month for free on top of this very good deal. So head on over to NordVPN today, get yourself protected, save 75% and get one month free just because you watch this channel. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech, tech. So honest it hurts. This is your first time here. Thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back again. I really do appreciate it. So let's just get straight into the business and talk about this new iPad Pro. Well, the two new iPad Pros that are coming out in less than a week now. They were announced just the other day and now I've had some time to think about what they're all about and I figured I would share that knowledge with you. So Apple's been pushing the idea that an iPad can be more of a computer for many, many years now. They had that really annoying commercial with that very cute girl who went around and did all kinds of creative things. And then, you know, at the end of the commercial, somebody said, hey, what are you doing on your computer? And she says, what's a computer? Yeah, that was that was bad. But the idea, good in the sense that. You know, let's move forward, right? iPad started out as like a device that you could use to watch things on your iPad and read books and maybe surf the web and that kind of stuff. And it was a great device for that. But over the years, it's been moving more and more so into the realm of being uh, a device that can serve many purposes. And this new iPad, the 2018 iPad Pros, are closer to that sort of computer slash extension of a computer place than any iPad has been before. A lot of that has to do with two major changes that they made to the device. One, every year we see a processor bump, but the processor bump that they have given this device is significant to say the least. We've gone to an eight core processor. This is a, a whole lot of processing power for something like a tablet. Then seven cores for the graphics processor, which means this thing has some serious horsepower under the hood, as they say. They've also gone to USB-C instead of lightning. And while this seems like maybe it's like they're just, oh, you know, the USB-C, the port of the future, blah, blah, blah. There are several significant things you can now do with an iPad that weren't necessarily possible with a lightning connector. I see this as them sort of saying, okay, the iPad Pro is no longer sort of a tablet device. It's more like our computer devices. We need to have a more computer-like port so that we can do things like run external displays, enable fast charging, uh, charge other devices. So if you're out on the road and your iPhone needs a little top up, then you can just plug it into the iPad Pro and away you go. <laughs> if you're a creative, you can connect peripherals like uh, ins like USB instruments and other type things to it. You can also use USB-C or USB-A with a dongle. Audio interfaces, so there's a lot of opportunity there. And then for creatives who are using it for a drawing tablet well obviously there's a brand new pencil that is even better than the pencil before and it's magnetized and all that kind of stuff and that's going to be a significant step forward for the visual arts creators out there they've changed the device design pretty significantly as well gone are sort of the rounded edges uh and it's been replaced with something that looks a little bit like it harkens back to the original ipad designs like this one 
Uh, I don't. I can't remember which iPad this is, but anyway, it's got v squared off sides, uh, a little bit of a rounded back, and it looks like the new iPads don't have this this rounded back. It's more flat. You've got much slimmer bezels on the new iPad than you have in, on any iPad in the past. It uses Face ID just like the 10 series iPhones to unlock the device and get you in. It can, you set it up, I guess, in portrait mode, and then you can use it in both portrait or landscape mode, and it'll work. The display uses the same technology that they developed for the 10R iPhone, uh, the liquid retina display. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what that means, but it's what they call it. And it has 120 hertz refresh rate, so moving back and forth through apps, there should be no motion blur really that's noticeable whatsoever. It will be a very smooth and really nice looking experience with that display. There are some downsides to, <laughs> to this design. Now, we have both a 12.9 inch and an 11 inch screen. Uh, the 12.9 inches, the iPad itself is much smaller than it used to be, and the 11 inch is still the same size as the 10.5 inch. The design is much slimmer than past iPads, and what that means is now the iPad has a camera bump. <laughs> That's really a bummer to someone like myself. I like to use the iPad and the pencil for like journaling and note taking, etc., etc., and so setting it down on a flat surface with that camera bump will make it wobbly, and that's just not good. I'm sure if you put an Apple case on it, the camera bump goes away and all that kind of stuff, but it's still something to note, still something that is a problem. The old Apple Pencil, which you may have spent $100 for at some point, is now no longer usable by the new iPad Pro. You have to get the new pencil that's more expensive to use a pencil with these new iPad Pros. I guess in some ways that's good because the new pencil is better than the old pencil. It has ma It's magnetized and can be held to the side and charged wirelessly when docked on the side of your device. It has one flat edge, etc., etc. So you don't have to have that sort of stick in, in the bottom of your, of your iPad thing. That really, that was really terrible. But it is a bummer that for people who did spend money to buy that pencil, uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be supported anymore. That's what I've heard. If I am wrong and you know that that pencil is supported in some way by the new iPad Pro, please let me know down in the comments. There's still no mouse support. And this is probably the greatest barrier for the iPads to turn into a computing device. Maybe mouse support will come one of these days. I know Samsung, with their DeX technology, uh, supports external peripherals, and you can use a mouse with DeX on the Samsung devices. Hopefully, Apple brings that to the table with an update sometime in the future. The last downside I'm going to talk about here is that Apple has now removed the headphone jack from the iPad. And for the, there are many of you out there who are probably like, oh, who cares, it's a headphone jack. Well. In this case, it really is a problem because the iPad has been a very versatile device when it comes to people who do DJing, people who record music, etc., etc. The headphone jack is an integral port when doing any of those kinds of work. So now that it's gone, you have to live the dongle life. The best solution, I would imagine, is getting a USB-C audio interface or get, have, getting a USB-A audio interface to, and have a dongle to USB-C, and then you'll get your headphone port back. But removing it from the device entirely causes a lot more problems for a lot more people than taking it away from the iPhones. They've released a new keyboard, smart keyboard for it that's ungodly expensive and it's really quite ridiculous. All told, I think the new iPads look like a great new edition. They have up the price. They start now at $799, which is kind of expensive for a 64 gigabyte 10 point something inch tablet. But with what they can do, maybe that maybe those prices are justifiable. You're always going to pay the Apple tax, but what you're getting from the Apple tax is 
a beautiful device that's most likely gonna work flawlessly 99% per, of the time. Anyway, again, thanks so much for being here. If this was your first time here and you wanna come back and see more videos about Apple-related stuff and tech in general, then hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and like this video, share it with your friends. And if you've been here before, well, you know that I love you. You guys are so awesome. And I look forward to seeing your faces every single time I come back to you with another video. If you're interested in the stuff that I use to make these videos, or if you want to support me on Patreon, or if you want to uh, get some Painfully Honest Tech merch like the t-shirt I have for sale, all the links for everything down in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Once again, thanks so much for being here. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Ah! Tech. So. Honest, it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.